My name is Iris Franz, and today we're going to talk about exchange rate determinants in the long run. So what is exchange rate? Exchange rate really is the rate at which we exchange our local currency, the dollar, with a foreign currency. In our example, it will be the euro. Now remember when you were studying principles of micro macroeconomics, you were studying the market equilibrium price of an apple using demand and supply analysis of an apple. Here there's no difference. The difference is that we are going to study the market of the euro. So we're going to treat the euro as the commodity, just like you treat apple as a commodity. And there's a demand and supply for the euro. So where does this demand and supply comes from? It really is a derived demand. So the reason why we demand euro is not because it's fun to hold on to euro, but rather because we're trying to do business with the Europeans. If you want to buy German beer, then the importer will have to um, import the German beer from, the, from Germany, and the importer will have to pay them euro to buy this beer. So that's where the demand for euro comes from. And uh, there are th several factors that will affect um, the exchange rate, and uh, we're going to talk about them one by one. The first one is relative productivity and price levels. So um, suppose all of a sudden the European countries they just become more productive and therefore they can um, provide their goods and services at much lower price. That will make the European goods and services a lot more attractive to the Americans. And therefore Americans will want to buy more European goods and services. And in order to buy goods and services from the Europeans, we will need to buy those goods and services with the euro. And therefore, our demand for euro is going to increase. And therefore, that will shift our demand for euro from D1 to D2. What about Europeans? Now they are more productive than us. And therefore, their goods are, and services are cheaper than ours. That will cause them to prefer to buy their local goods than goods from America. And therefore, their demand, Europeans' demand for the dollar, is going to decrease. That also means their supply for euro is going to decrease. Why is that? The reason is this. To buy American goods, the Europeans will have to um, purchase a dollar with their euro. And therefore, their demand for the dollar is the same thing as their supply for euro, because there's exchange. And therefore, when the Europeans prefer to buy their local goods, they don't want to buy from the States, their demand for dollar is going to decrease, meaning their supply of euro is also going to decrease. So you can see their supply of euro is going to shift from S1 to S2. And at equilibrium, you can see the price of a euro in terms of the dollar has increased from $1 to $1.50, meaning now it costs more dollars to buy one euro. So the dollar has become less valuable, meaning the dollar has depreciated. So if the European countries become more productive than America, then um, their price level is also going to become lower. That is going to cause the dollar to depreciate. And the second factor is preference for domestic and foreign goods. So for example, suppose all of a sudden we prefer to drink French wine and we also prefer German beer than our local wine and beer, then in order to buy European wine, European beer, our demand for the euro is going to increase. So that will shift our demand for euro from D1 to D2. And therefore, at the equilibrium, you can see the price of one euro in terms of the dollar has increased from one dollar to one dollar and twenty cents. And therefore, the dollar has lost its value because now it takes more dollar to buy one euro. And therefore, we say the dollar has depreciated. And lastly, trade barriers. So suppose the U.S. government wanted to protect, um, say, our local wine producers or our local beer producers. So the government imposed a tariff on European wine, European beer. So in that case, for Americans, European wine and beer will become relatively expensive and less attractive for us. And therefore, we don't want to buy wine or beer from them. We want to consume our local wine and local beer. Therefore, the demand for euro is going to decrease and shifting from D1 to D2. And in the equilibrium, you will see that now it costs fewer dollars.
to buy one euro. So the price of one euro is not one dollar anymore. The price of one euro is now only 80 cents. And therefore you can see that the value of the dollar has increased. So we say the dollar has appreciated. So there are several factors that can affect our exchange rate in the long run and these are just three examples. So thanks for watching and good luck with your studying.